drawing tail by the nose. Beam aboard E.T. to witness the most illogical phenomenon, the Star Trek fans. There is scientific evidence the worship is worldwide. Les manuels sont disponibles pour tout le monde. Ammetterà data che il compito affidatoci dalla flotta stellare è difficile. The women of the Starship Enterprise are ready to take over the ship. While Captain Kirk is saddling up on his own frontier. You're here in Kentucky, on my farm called Bel Rev. We have all kinds of creatures and worlds left to explore. As our tour of the Star Trek universe continues this weekend. Welcome back to our special edition of Entertainment Tonight. I'm Lisa Gibbons. And I'm Bob Gowen. And this, of course, is a place that's familiar to all Trekkies, Trekkers, everybody <laughs> who watches television, <laughs> actually. This is the bridge, the place from which all the commands are given. And you see these people working around in the background. They're actually just putting on a few finishing touches, spiffing it up for the movie. Exactly. Now, uh, these are very nice people here, but you know, the creatures who inhabit the world of Star Trek they're pretty odd, and some odd characters come, of course, out of the minds of the Star Trek writers. Well, there are no creatures who are more colorful, more unique, more passionate than the ones who are allowed to really roam freely over this great Earth of ours. They, of course, the Star Trek fans. ET Logs, Stardate 318-94.2. We've encountered a most unusual phenomenon that appears to be widespread on Earth countless thousands of ordinarily sane, well-adjusted individuals transform themselves into futuristic intergalactic beings and then convene to share information and exchange goods. Investigation commencing immediately. Well, you get the picture. We're talking, of course, about Star Trek conventions, those sanctuaries where celestial daydreams are played out and the future is now. For many, it's a chance to be a member of Starfleet. I'm a member of Starfleet International, with the ship USS Atreides up in San Francisco, and um, I'm the ship's counselor. I'm a Bajoran tail by the nose, and um, I'm wearing a Starfleet uniform, so I'm um, Ensign Row. But not everyone fancies a career working for the Federation. Starfleet. Klingon is a warrior. They're the only thing to be. Star Trek fans, whether they call themselves Trekkies or the more recently coined Trekker, also come to conventions so as to have close encounters with cast members. They personify what the, I think the human being should be all around. Of course, Star Trek merchandise is another big draw at conventions, and what a universe it is. There are guidebooks for the armchair warriors, phasers for the more active types, tricorders for the scientific, posters, plates, pins, and more accessories than you could shake a Romulan death stick at. These are Star Trek checks. They are uh, accepted throughout the galaxy. And those Star Trek checks can also be used to buy plenty of new Star Trek merchandise that is just now making its way into stores. For the younger recruits who like to feel they're on the bridge of the Enterprise, a brand new interactive game by Nintendo has just hit the streets. You watch it and you see that you see the people playing it, but you control it. And it's amazing how they do that. But wait, there's more. Captain, I am detecting an intruder. From talking lunchboxes to Borg banks, frisbees to yo-yos, classic Star Trek to Deep Space Nine, the plethora of merchandise out there is mind-numbing. As for what may lie ahead, who knows? The possibilities are as endless as space itself. The only certainty is that the Star Trek fan, ever eager, will be the first in line to buy. Boy, would Trekkies kill to be sitting where we're sitting right now? So jealous. Right here on the bridge. You know, I was here late at night one time, bowling balls came out of this thing. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You know, at that last convention that we were telling you about, 15,000 Star Trek fans showed up for that thing. This, they're huge. All right, I'm not surprised. And the fans are so loyal. Yeah. But let's say you are a, a Star Trek fan, and you do go to the convention. Right. And you buy all the merchandise. Mm -hmm. And you've seen all the TV shows and the movies, and you know the dialogue. <laughs> what the And you still don't have enough <laughs> for your obsession. Yeah. What do you do? I don't know. You go to Klingon camp. And that's exactly where we sent Michael Scott. Early morning at summer camp, a babbling brook, the raising of the flag, and a spirited rendition of the national anthem. Ta -ja -wo. That would be the Klingon national anthem. It's all part of the day here at Camp Klingon in Red Lake Falls, Minnesota. With time 
eager followers of this hard-headed intergalactic race traveled here to bone up on their Klingon language skills. But before class got started, I was invited to take part in a little toast. Now, wait a minute, what is this, dishwasher, liquid, or what? Romulan it? ale. Romulan ale. I was losing the head on it. You too. Drink. Talking to some of the campers, I found they take Klingonese very seriously. I, I was at work, and I was going, and they were going, do you know how to speak? I was going, I have no idea what I just said. <laughs> well, what you just said, you forgot what <laughs> now. Now, take the blade of your hand and bounce it against your Adam's apple and go... Instructing campers in the ABCs of Klingon was linguistics professor Lawrence Schoen, who said he hopes they come away learning more than just the 21 consonants and five vowels of the Klingon language. In the sort of insidious way, we're tricking them into learning a little bit. So we're having a good time, and there's also some education going on. Captain, give me a good word with a capital Q. Which, of course, means? Good. To be good. Other phrases were also popular. What are you learning? Uh, how to say, I killed you, and you kill me, and just regular, useful Klingon terms. Campers even practiced their language skills while taking part in the national pastime. What's what? What's that mean? Strike one. Strike one, okay. <laughs> so now this piece of Minnesota is under Klingon domination. Now, for the sake of interplanetary goodwill, we wish the Klingons good luck, but not too much luck. Kapla! Good job, human! Thank you. Michael Scott, Entertainment Tonight. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Michael. And I personally would just like to add, Mukta Wakwij Balamka Chukwak. What does that mean? Is that really something? Yes, it means, where do I get my shoe shine? <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> good. Yeah. You never know when you may need that in that space travel. Nice. Handy Klingon pocket dictionary. I'll loan it to you. Perfect. I'll borrow it soon. Don't go away. When we come back, we are going to meet the man who is probably most synonymous with the success of Star Trek. Stand by, Mr. Sulu. Spark has something. He loves being Captain Kirk, but William Shatner has a more down-to-earth passion as well. That story next. <laughs>